Chinese banks' loan exposure to real estate developers is only around single digits, but their exposure to mortgages, housing loans, stands at around a quarter of their loans. Could Chinese banks be the next domino to be affected by the real estate trouble in China? Hello, welcome to another RHB Treasury podcast. I'm Chris Tan, Fixed Income Strategist at RHB Banking Group. China's real estate troubles are well reported in the media, but today we want to cast a wider net and dive into China's banking sector to see what are the potential risks facing the sector and we will stress test the top 10 banks and review our discovery. China's private real estate companies are facing liquidity crisis as property sales has fallen from a cliff while facing a mountain of debt after they overextended their balance sheets in debt as they expanded aggressively during the real estate boom in the past two decades. While markets are focused on the distressed real estate stock and bonds, we wanted to shift our sights towards the banks to see if the real estate crisis would affect the banks. We have discovered that under our base case scenario where the developers default increased by 150%, the top banks' excess capital will remain intact. Here are the facts. Number one, the top 10 Chinese banks' exposure to real estate developer loans remain limited at 2.9% to 7.3% of their total loans. As developers has been more reliant on bond and equity, for capital rather than banking loans. In terms of quality, the real estate loan quality is mixed with MPLs ranging from 1.3% to 7.2%. This is higher than the bank's overall MPL of 0.8% to 1.6%. Meanwhile, if you look at mortgage loan, the quality remains healthy with MPLs below zero of 0.4% to 0.7% as of financial year 2022. Regarding the mortgage loan quality, we must also note that mortgage loan to value in China is very low at around 40 to 50%, which helps in boosting the loan quality. On a year-on-year basis, in terms of CNY, Asset quality has deteriorated as aggregate real estate MPLs of 10 banks rose by 63.7% in FY22, while mortgage MPLs rose by 46%. Number two, the bank's loan exposure to mortgage, which are much higher than real estate developers, at 18% to 31% of their total loans. If the overall Chinese economy weakens beyond our expectations, the bank's mortgage quality could be at risk if a severe downturn affects households' ability to service their mortgages. However, this is not our base case. Now, moving on to our real estate stress test. In our stress test, we tested the bank's excess CET1 ratio. Excess CET1 ratio is the excess capital above the minimum regulatory requirement. To, to determine whether the excess capital can withstand deterioration from real estate mortgage losses. In terms of percentage, CMB, ICBC, and CCB has the highest CET1 ratio, while in ICBC, CCB, and BOC, has the highest excess CET1 in CNY terms. So this is our three scenarios. In the mild or base case scenario, we are stressing tests the bank's FY22 real estate NPL ratios and increasing it by 150%. We think an 115% increase is reasonable given it's more than FY22's increase of real estate MPL of 63.7%. In the moderate scenario, the respective bank's MPL is ignored and 
a indiscriminate percentage based on outstanding loan is used. We use a 10% of real estate loan, a 10% of corporate bond holdings, and 1% mortgage loan loss is used. In the severe scenario, we increase the losses from the moderate scenario. Real estate loan is increased to 20%, mortgage bond holding losses increase to 20%, and 5% of loss in the mortgage is used as the parameters. Although the likelihood of a severe scenario is low, we do not discount the possibility of such deterioration to materialize. So for the result, our real estate scenario shows that the 10 largest Chinese banks' excess CET1 ratio will remain in surplus in our mild or base case. While the two banks, ICBC and CITIC, we have capital shortfall in a moderate scenario. While six banks, ABC, PSB, BOCOM, IBC, CITIC, and SPDB will face capital shortfall in our severe scenario. IBC and CITIC are the most sensitive to deterioration in asset quality due to having the least excess CET1 ratio. BOCOM and SPDB are also susceptible to real estate and mortgage risk given their high exposure to the two sectors while having relatively small excess CET1 ratio. Meanwhile, PSB has small excess CET1 capital but has low real estate exposure but high exposure to mortgages. Notwithstanding our stress scenario, banks have wide range of options to show up capital and state support is expected given the systematically important status of these banks. Notwithstanding the loss scenarios, the banks have room to raise capital or dispose NPLs to asset management companies, which they have done in the past. According to regulators, a total of 2.7 trillion yuan of NPLs were sold off to distressed asset management companies in 2022. So, in conclusion, we think the China's 10 largest bank will be able to maintain their going concern in this current real estate environment. That's all we have for this episode and thank you for tuning in and see you in the next podcast.